Mr. John Mokes, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. And we first would like to know about how users read online. Based on the research you have done, quickly tell us about how they scan online pages. Users tend to read differently online than they do in print. Um, the main reason is that people are really in a hurry um, when they're online, and there are many other places that they can go to get their information, and many other websites that they could be visiting. So um, users tend to scan or skim pages mm -hmm. first before they uh, decide to switch into reading mode. So users will find the, the information of interest, and then they'll decide, OK, I'll read all of this information now. Whereas in print, people are generally more likely to read word by word from beginning to end. Um, and we've also found through research that people tend to prefer shorter text, so concise text online, rather than the full version that you might see in print. Mm -hmm. People are just less willing to read a lot on computer screens because it's slower and it's more tiring for people. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will still print out text from websites and read it on paper because they prefer that way better. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we've found out in terms of how people read online is that they prefer um, reading about facts and benefits rather than subjective claims. Mm -hmm. So promotional writing generally is viewed with skepticism um, if it's overly done, if it's over the top. Um, so we advise people based on our research to focus on the benefits, focus on the facts, and you're more likely to get the, the reader's attention. And this is more true on the web than it is in print. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we know that there are different types of sites. So for informational sites that just have information and no services on them, and for sites that are basically transactional or have e-services, how, bo how can they both address e-content? And are the considerations different? or not? Um, there are similarities and differences. So what's similar is in both cases you want to understand your users, the different types of users you have, the demographic information that would describe them, and you want to make sure that um, you're appealing to what the users care about. So in one case where they're interested in information, you want to make sure that it's easy for them to find. So you might decide you need to provide a search function as well as a browse function, mm -hmm. and you might also need to call attention to uh, most popular items by elevating them, say on your home page, putting them at the top, mm -hmm. making them very easy for people to find. Um, because with information sites, most, most of the time people are just trying to read information to be educated or informed, and they're not ne necessarily trying to complete any tasks mm -hmm. beyond that or take any actions. Mm -hmm. With the service-oriented websites, the idea is the same where you need to understand the audience and also what their goals are. Um, but in this case, you need to understand how people like to accomplish their tasks, mm -hmm. whether it's completing a form, whether it's um, requesting information, whether it's registering um, for something, um, or like in e-commerce, mm -hmm. um, people would be buying things online. The interactions there are more complicated, and um, you're more likely to take people through a series of steps to uh, accomplish those tasks. and you need to provide the multiple paths that will appeal to the different types of people mm -hmm. um, to help them. Again, uh, a common thread is that they're searching for something and then they're going to take some action at the end. So part there is a little bit of overlap, but in the second case here, we're, we're interested in user efficiency and making sure that we're guiding people through the steps necessary mm -hmm. to complete the tasks. And with the information people, it's mainly about helping them find the information quickly and then let them switch into reading mode. Mm -hmm. With the service-oriented users, we're trying to make sure that they're able to quickly complete their tasks, and that might require them to scan a page quickly to find what they're interested in, find the action buttons or links that they care about, um, and they might not ever actually switch into reading mode. So mm -hmm. the, the strategy is a little bit different in how you present the information. Mm -hmm. um, in both cases, though, we would recommend that you get some feedback from representative and users. Mm -hmm. So create some designs, add some content. They can be prototype designs or test your existing site. Um, and one person at a time, get the feedback to see whether people are able to find the information they want or take the actions that they want mm -hmm. um, in an efficient way. Mm -hmm. 
An interesting term is attention economics. How can that relate to the web as a medium of communication? So attention economics refers to the fact that a user could be on your website doing something that you might find interesting mm -hmm. um, and valuable to your organization, or that person could be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. In the case of e-commerce, a user might be buying from you or they might be going to your competition. So if um, it's too difficult to complete that task or to find that product on your site, then Attention Economics says that people will have a short attention span and will go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They might go to your competitor's site, they might pick up the phone and, and call you instead, or they might show up in person at your office or, or shop in order to buy something from you. Mm -hmm. And usually the goal is to get them to complete their transaction um, online with your website because it saves you money. Mm -hmm. um, usually it's more expensive to go to those other channels and it's definitely more expensive for you if they're buying from your competitor and not yourself. So because of the technology that the web um, provides, it's very easy now for people to leave your website and go somewhere else. Either you know a competitive, competitive site or maybe just go and and surf the web and do something entirely different and um, you'll never get their business if mm -hmm. uh, if you're not meeting their needs mm -hmm. in the attention economy that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, we also hear about content usability so we know about e-content but the term linking it with usability how can e-content be usable? Um, you can make e-content usable by focusing on what users care about Users typically care about finding the information that they need, solving the problems that they care about, buying the thing that they're looking for. Um, and we need content that supports those goals. So to make it usable, we would look at questions like, are they able to complete their tasks? Can they do whatever it is that they're trying to do, is the first question, or do they fail at that attempt? The second thing would be, can they do so efficiently? So are they able to do it in a reasonable amount of time? And usually the users are the ones who decide what that reasonable amount of time would be. It's not so much about the number of clicks because you know you could create a web page that had all of your information on that one page and it would basically be one click for somebody to find it. So one click's not the answer. It's more about the, the efficiency um, in terms of the time and effort that it takes. Um, and another good thing to consider would be how appealing the experience is. So is the user experience satisfying? Mm -hmm. Do people like using the website? Um, if the content is um, efficient and they're able to complete their tasks and the, the website is organized in a way that makes sense and the look and feel are appealing enough, then we would say that you have usable content. Mm -hmm. Those are the main uh, metrics to look at. Mm -hmm. okay. Many organizations, including IC Qatar, have both print publications and website presence. How can they fit both together and how can they ensure that bo both content are not re uh, redundant and both complement each other and give each other some edge over there? The answer, I think, is to look at how users will be interacting with the content. So, um, in some cases, organizations will take PDFs and just post them online, mm -hmm. which is very difficult for people to scan. So understanding that people tend to scan, we need to solve the problem by providing previews and summaries for people mm -hmm. if we're providing PDF documents online. So there would be an HTML version um, summarizing the contents of that PDF mm -hmm. that you could then scan and click on if you wanted to actually get into that PDF document. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of cases, it's better not to present the PDF document online at all. It's, it's better to do it in an HTML format. Um, other considerations would be to think about um, the goals of the print material versus the goals of the online material. So in some cases, um, for press releases, for example, there's a traditional way of doing press releases and it's very print focused. Mm. And that's because press releases used to be sent through the post. They used to be faxed quite often. Sometimes they still are. But now a lot of times they're posted um, on websites. And so 
you might think, well, how can we make a press release that would work in both media? And the answer would be to format it correctly for the web, which would also benefit the print version. And by that I mean adding meaningful headings and subheadings and bulleted lists, um, numbered lists when appropriate, um, captions if you have images or graphics in your press release, things that will make it easy for people to scan. And then when you put that online, it's going to support the people who are trying to find out whether it's scannable. Mm. But if you print it out or you have a print version, it's also going to be useful for the people who are um, looking for the print version for mm. faxing, etc. So there are some common things that would overlap, but then there are some other situations where you might want to have different versions. Mm. You might use a PDF if you have a brochure that needs to look a certain way visually. Mm. So if there are marketing materials that need to be um, printed out like posters or something like that and merely distributed through the web, then you would still want to use a PDF and carefully design mm -hmm. what that poster would look like. Mm. Okay. My final question is how can any website owner evaluate the success of his e-content strategy? What are the matrix that he can use? Um, so a lot of the time it depends on what your goals are as an organization and so for um, content rich websites they might care about the number of visitors or page views or the number of people registering, opening accounts, etc. Um, the efficiency with which people are able to find information or complete their tasks. So you might be looking at web analytics data um, but you need to interpret the data carefully because they won't always tell you why somebody visits a page or how long, you know, why they spend a certain amount of time on that page. Um, but you can certainly look at efficiency and you can measure it through user testing directly by observing people mm -hmm. and timing them to complete their tasks. Um, other metrics might include uh, sales, like if you're an e-commerce site you want to know mm -hmm you know, have sales increased or decreased with our new design for our website. Um, you can also test some of this stuff through direct feedback sessions with users. So you could do user satisfaction questionnaires mm -hmm. in person after someone has used the site. You could also do feedback forms on web pages if you're not in person with the site or with the, with the user of the site. And um, all of these data sources can be really valuable in terms of figuring out what metrics or how you're doing against the metrics. Uh, another good one might be the number of phone calls you receive either through support, technical support mm -hmm. from users or questions about um, policies or something like that for, mm -hmm. for the ICT site. And, and you, if you add all of this up together, you get a good picture of the success of a website rather than focusing on just one mm -hmm. or two sources of data. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this valuable interview. We appreciate it very much.